Egregors are immaterial, spiritless, informational entities that organize the existing reality according to a certain law. Men do not establish this law, it is established by upper forces, higher forces, for the purpose of the achievement of certain goals. An egregor will never care about a person. Its main task is to direct a person's time into a certain channel, in some direction of the future, taking away part of that time for itself because egregors must eat something too. There is not enough energy there. They eat what the causal body produces, that is, time. And our time, as a rule, is associated with the experience of emotions. Thus, egregors take people's time by making them experience a lot of emotions in this process. For future reference, for understanding. The area of life which you give the majority of your emotions to, the area of life that you spend the majority of your time on, is the egregor that curates your fate. Remember that. We'll return to this in a few days after we do the main work. People's values exist at the level of the buddhic body, and people's goals exist on the mental body level. Logic dictates that within a free consciousness, the goal setting should be aimed at maintaining, strengthening and realizing his own values. Is that true or not? Logic suggests that it is so. But to our great regret, this process does not always happen. Why? Firstly, because values are never individual, but they are always shared. Even if you have some unique value, at least one person in this world would possess that same value as well, meaning that it wouldn't be unique any longer. Secondly, there, between the buddhic and the mental bodies, is the causal body. By our reason, it is the body of the cause-effect relationships. And it is also the body that generates time, because through the structure we generate time and form our long-term memory. And in terms of the world, this is the event-based field, and the event-based field is created precisely by an egregorial structure. And so accordingly, we can apply our own goals only to the existing social and event-based field which, as stated, is created by egregors and is not made for you, but for egregors themselves. If your goal coincides with the event, you get luck. That is the rapid achievement of the goal, but if they don't coincide, you get failure. Logic suggests that if our goals don't come to fruition, then the probable cause should be sought in the fact that the goal setting doesn't coincide with the event-based field. Meaning, I want to achieve something, but the events don't work out. The events don't work out for a year, for two or three years, they don't work out for 15 years, and why is that happening? Because the egregorial field has no interest in creating events for you personally. However, the law states that if a certain goal was formed within the mental body, it wasn't just formed out of nowhere. There were reasons for it. We either somehow mentally decided that this is possible and have wished for this very same thing, or possibly it was some sort of an inner need that spilled out into the mental field this way, taking the shape of precisely such thought, such need. It's just that a goal is different from a desire in that a desire is simply the experience of a certain state, and a goal in its turn requires particular actions. And when the goal has been formed within the mental body, it says, seems I'm lacking methods, and I don't really know how to achieve these methods. The mental body turns to the causal body, since all methods are recorded there in the form of own experience, and experience says, I have no methods either. We can use someone else's experience or wait until we form our own. But waiting for the experience to form just means waiting for those very favorable conditions that you may never have for one simple reason. The egregorial system that curates you personally cannot 
is not able to or is not interested to create these special preconditions where you can take this experience and form a new cause-effect chain for yourself. But again, logic suggests that if your egregor can't create preconditions for you, some other egregor will surely be able to. So maybe just change egregor? Changing an egregor is not that easy, given that it will require you to change your beliefs, since we connect with egregors through our sphere of beliefs. For example, if you have a mentally projected belief that comes from the phrase you can only put yourself to good use in the country you were born, and you are firmly tied to the egregor of your homeland, your own country, and say, the event-based field that you need is unfolding somewhere in Bolivia, then you probably won't stand a chance to get it. You would stand no chance, because such a belief won't allow you to even think of going somewhere to gain this experience. It is better to wait 15 years, that is to give 15 years of your time to the egregor, and then maybe it will create something for you on this basis, something quite surrogate, somewhat similar, but inapplicable to the experience you need, perhaps resembling it on the outside, but not even close to what is actually needed. The reason for the non-fulfillment of the goal may be that the egregorial system you are tied to is unable, has no right, or doesn't want to create the event-based field on the level of your need. For example, you're tied to the egregor of your family, and all your interests and time are given only to your family, your husband, your children. It's a very small egregorial structure, very small. There is a hierarchy of egregors, I will tell you about it as well. A family egregor is probably the weakest structure currently, but once upon a time it was the strongest one of them all. Those who have read my book about the power of the bloodline know this. This book talks about how this egregorial system transformed over time. Once it was really a powerful layer and all other egregors served the egregor of a kin, but over time things have changed. The egregor of kin and family has turned into a servant of anybody and everybody. Correspondingly, the event-driven field would only be able to occur if you are included into your family, and it would only occur within the territory entrusted to your care, that is, your kitchen. If something happens in the kitchen, that is your event. But it won't happen outside of your home, because that would be a foreign territory with the other egregorial systems. And it's quite possible that your egregor won't be able to agree on joint creation of an event-based field with other egregors. Therefore, you can wait for an event like winning a million dollars while forgetting to buy a lottery ticket for as long as you like. For one simple reason, you didn't make a contact with a system that is able to organize the series of events for you to be able to get what you want. You just didn't make that contact. So we need to find a mechanism to make this contact. This is the first task we set before us when we ask ourselves the question related to realizing our goals. But this is not all. The fact is that within the consciousness of a person, the goal is very closely connected with the value that supports it. The values within the bodic body are constants. They generally don't change unless through magical touch or under an enormous stress when something happens that shakes up your entire life. And that is precisely the time to revise our values. As a rule, people avoid this at all costs, and values and beliefs are the last thing they will ever touch. But it is natural from the magical point of view. Yes, we must transform our values and beliefs, changing them to fit completely different tasks. Therefore, there is some value within your consciousness that being the main and dominant one does not encourage the formation of such goals. A dominant value that simply bans these goals, saying, I forbid you to give your energy of desire to achieve this goal. I forbid it. 
And it would seem like you want it, but as soon as you start wanting it more intensely than before, the energy begins to disappear. And where does it go to? It goes towards the creation of certain events. Something starts happening straight away and you are no longer up to your initial goal, right? That's the way things usually happen. And if you are attentive in relation to your own life, you can trace such a pattern. Yes, it happens. It happens a lot. As mentioned before, the buddhic body is the last thing the consciousness will allow us to revise. And it won't let us naturally rise to our personal level. It will just forbid it. Hence our task will be to deceive our consciousness in a way. I hope you understand that this is for our own benefit. We will also have to deceive our subconscious, since it shackles and restrains this entire construction via the so-called immovable marks. Those of you familiar with the techniques of our second course know that an immovable mark consists of conserved energy, very dense, which acts as a sort of rechargeable battery supporting this program. Belief, prohibition of the goal, and energy that feeds the program. Between all of this, there is the causal field, which is precisely the location where we would find ourselves by the means of some sort of series of events if we suddenly try to direct energy here from another source. It will be activated immediately. It's a kind of stopper, so we need to dismantle this construction. This construction can be dismantled in different ways. In our main course, we do it slowly and sorrowfully, so as not to harm ourselves. We cleanse the astral marks, dismantle rigid mental constructs, work with karmic chains, and after all of this, we pray and approach this buddhic structure and say, Who are you? How did you get to be in my head? But this can be done only once we walk this path all the way. And it is a long pathway, colleagues. It is long, but less traumatic. But there is also another pathway that we will at least try launching into our consciousness today. And if you feel that it is your tool, you will master it in your life to perfection. Meaning temporarily block, shall we say, to temporarily block the astral body and to find a different workaround for the purpose of not setting off the security alert system. We'll try to go around it without even brushing its perimeter. But anything can happen. And sometimes we move in our astral space, similar to a bull in a china shop. And sometimes we can grace something. And when we grace something, we will experience a state, that very astral state, which we have repeatedly discussed in our classes. A state of how subconscious responds in order not to do something. Laziness is the first one to appear. Therefore, it will manifest itself in the form, I don't want to do anything. I'm hot, I'm bored, nothing is clear, I better go home. If that isn't effective and your will still grabs you by the scruff and says, sit, where are you going? Sit, we'll understand it all soon. Wait just a moment, I'm not hot, it's just warm. After this, another reaction comes. That is aggression. Meaning that if laziness wasn't effective, we become aggressive. That is, everyone is guilty and me above all. There is aggression towards oneself as well as toward others, as told before. If you overcome this too, if you overpower this, next the physical distress begins. That is the last argument brought forth by the subconscious, saying, can't you hear me? I'm telling you not to touch that stuff, don't touch it, leave it as it is. And if you overcome this too, it says, that's it, I've done all I could, it's not up to me any longer. Consequently, if we go around the perimeter, we can avoid all these effects, but we can also graze the perimeter, so don't be surprised if you get these three reactions. These reactions are planned, that is how the security alert system works. So our task will be trying to deceive this whole structure using the second method, which is called going around the perimeter, and discovering the connection between the goals and values. On the first stage, we set the task to figure out what values support our goals and how this might manifest itself in our lives. 
It's a very easy task, and it's quite a gentle one. But out of this work that we will do, we'll get a huge amount of material for analyzing. And this would be exactly the material we need in order to write a new program for success for ourselves. And we are going to write this program based on what is within the consciousness. We will just rearrange these Lego blocks in a slightly different way. And in order to do that, we have to remove the instructions describing to us how it is to be done, because there are many other instructions available.